good morning, y'all. Um, <clears throat> first, I would like to welcome you to the recovery room. Um, I'm Cassiopeia. I did a live uh, on last year about my experience uh, from my divorce, my healing journey. Um, and so I was getting a lot of questions as to why, what am I doing now or what's going on now. So um, the time now is like three something in the morning and the Lord put it on my heart to get up and start doing a Bible study because that's the only thing that helped me is the word of God. Everything else mm -mm, doesn't do a thing, right? So we're just going to jump right in. First, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for all that you do, God. Thank you for another day. God, I ask that you just guide me and lead me as we dive into your word on this morning, God. Thank you for being so good. You are so gracious. Uh, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, this morning, we are going to be reading out of a Bible. <laughs> um, Psalms 116. And it says, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then... I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. I think I said that right. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For, the, for you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted the Lord when I said I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of my salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the, is, death, is the death of his faithful servant. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vow to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. So, I read this this morning. And it starts off saying, I love the Lord for he heard my cry. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. So, when I when I read that verse this morning, I thought about when, when you are in trouble. Or even my own experience. I was in a marriage where it just was, it was, it just wasn't, <laughs> it was terrible, right? Some parts were terrible as, as we go on further and further, um, with this Bible study, you know, I'll be, I'm, I'm going to be transparent, but, um, some parts of it was like really terrible. And I used to ask God, like, is this how my life is going to be like, I, I just don't feel like this is your purpose or your plan for me. So in those moments, I would call upon the name of the Lord. I would literally cry and be like, God, you have to help me. You are going to have to help me. And he did just that. It says I will call on him as long as I live. And because I went through those situations, it caused me to whenever I'm in a, a stressful situation, I literally have to stop and call on God like I, I need your help. I, I just can't do this by myself or whatever the situation may be. And he has proven himself over and over again. I was walking up my steps on last week um, to my apartment. Um, and I just began to just thank God because I was so grateful, like not to have to be in a situation where I was uncomfortable or sad or I was I was wishing for death every day. I was wishing to die. And I just thought about how the Lord just came and delivered me um, 
from my situation, from my from my marriage. And if you want to hear more about it, I'll post a link in the um in the description box below so you can hear, you know, what God delivered me from. It says the cords of death entangled me and they ang and the anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. And that was so true. I was so I was so sad. Like I was just going through the motions. I was just so sad. But when I really reached out to God for help, he came through. He just he's just so good. He saved me. That's what the, the scripture says. The Lord came and he saved me. I'm going to skip to verse six. It says the Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Now, I had to look that word up because I didn't know what it was. So let me just give you the definition. It's um, it's unwary. So it's an adjective, not cautious, not aware of problems or danger. It's not alert, easily fooled, surprised, heedless and gullible. That was so me. That was so me. Like I was in a place where I wanted to be with somebody so bad. I'd be like a deer in the headlights. Is that him, Jesus? Ooh, is that him, Jesus? Oh, Lord, is that him, Jesus? You know, I was just I was just so oh, just a just a mess. And I, I remember I, I literally was all of those adjectives like so gullible because I wanted what I wanted. Right. I just wanted to be married so bad that I just took any and everything or or maybe. It says gullible. So some stuff like I got played. <laughs> I was so I, I'm talking about they they ran circles around me and um, I was just that unwary. But but God is so faithful. It says the Lord protects the unwary. So even in my stupidity, OK, or my greenness, God still protected me. Right. When I was brought low, he saved me. You know, even in the midst of all that, even in that ugly, the Bible says he'll give you beauty for ashes. So I had to I had to experience unwary so I can come to the, the place of wary, which is I looked that up too. to be wary is to be very watchful or cautious. Now, I'm not saying become like, uh, uh, be, because if we go back to one of the well, it's further down the, the line. Um, in verse 10, it says, I trusted the Lord when I said I'm greatly afflicted in my alarm. I said everyone is a liar. So in my mind, in my uh, when I became wary of things, which is to become more watchful, you got to be careful with that because you can also become bitter with that. It says be become watchful or, or, or cautious prudent meaning wise it doesn't say like just put up this wall like uh-uh like you know the chris brown song dun, 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 dun. you can't be like that you know you can't you can't be like no nah, everybody the same because it even said it everyone is a liar and that's not that's not true you know all men are not the same am i in a relationship now no but i i have encountered some great men right and and I had and I had to learn that not to become bitter in my wariness. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It just be said it says become watchful or cautious. So that means let's pray without ceasing. You know, whenever a situation arises or, or if I meet a person or any of that, I have to pray and put on my spirit of dis discernment so I won't walk into the um the the stage I was once seeing by being easily fooled or or heedless or gullible right so anyway it says verse 13 I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people and that's what I'm doing now that's what I'm doing right now I I went through a stage of okay Lord you brought me through this so what do I do with with what you brought me through and the bible tells us that they overcome by the word of the testimony and the blood of the lamb right so what i'm doing now is i've, I've shared my testimony right so now i want to make a vow to god like everything i've experienced in my life 
I want I want to share it. Right. But I want to share it according to your word. Not that I get glory, not that I get fame, but I just want my life to be a testament that we are overcomers. You don't have to live in on uh, on the unwariness. Like when, once Christ stepped into your life, you become wary. Right. You become watchful and cautious and prudent and aware, not scary. Because the Bible says he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. I was once just lost with no direction, not knowing what to do um, in in as far as like my life. Like I wanted to take it upon myself and and fix it, I guess. Or I wanted to determine the steps of how I was supposed to be. But the Bible tells us like the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Right. When you when you try to do things in your own understanding or in your own way, you're it's it's not going to work without Christ. Like it's just not going to work. And, yeah, I'm in a season right now where do I want to date? Of course I want to date. Right. Do I want to be married again? Of course I want to be married again. But I have to wait. Right. Wait patiently for the Lord. I wrote a song called I'll Wait. The, the lyrics in life, we try to rush the, the process, process, but the stuff we seek, we seek becomes destructive. God says, I know the plans I have for you, not for harm, just for good. Why can't you wait? Just wait. And so that's what I'm resting in. Like, I'm not trying to rush. God is a deliverer. Yes. But once he delivers you from something, I feel you need to take a season where you just heal. Right. And, I, and, and healing means not to rush into something else because I, from my experience, I've been married twice, right? From my experience, I wasn't completely healed from the first marriage. So because of that, because I didn't want to be lonely because I was still not fully healed and still walking in, in unwariness, right? I fell back into the same, same situation, if if not worse, I fell back into the same situation because I wasn't completely healed. Right. So when the Lord delivers you from a thing and he is the great deliverer, take time and take a season to where you 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 reheal. I don't know if reheal is the word you heal. You you study his word. You become more confident in his word. I'm not I'm not I'm not a dater. I'm not saying you can't date. I don't I don't know. I got to study the Bible a little bit more. When it comes to dating, but, you know, when I read Genesis, you know, Eve met Adam. He, she didn't meet like Tony, Jericho, Luther. She didn't meet all those people. She just met Adam. So, you know, I'm, I don't know with, with dating. I'm not, I'm not the dating type. I feel like, Lord, I don't know what you see. I don't know what I was doing. I done made mis- two, two big old mistakes, right? So I'm going to need you to let him find me because I have no idea what I'm doing. So as, as um, but anyway, just getting back to the scripture, just let's just wait on God. Let's make a vow. Like once he delivers you, make a vow, like whatever he delivered you from, go ahead and share that, express that, um, tell of the goodness of God. CC Winans has a song. I will sing of your goodness all my life. You've been faithful all my life. You've been so, so good. And I will sing of the goodness of God. And that's what I that's what what I want my life to look like. What I want my these Bible studies. I wanted to reflect the goodness of God and how he he's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a protector. And he is all of those things. He has been all of those things. I look at this apartment now, even from the first time when I first left the first marriage lord jesus i've been married so many times when i left the first marriage i left with two diapers god made a way right i got an apartment for a little while i really didn't get the hang of it had to go back and stay with my mom but it's still it's all good because now i'm in apartment by myself seeking to get a house so it's like you know he just he's just so good he's just so good it says I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to you, Lord, in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. So that's just like my public declaration. I feel like that's what church is. I I feel 
I feel like it's very important to be a part of a, of a church, of a good church home that teaches. But I also know that you need a daily relationship with Christ. Like it needs to be, you need to talk to him every day. And that's something I'm still learning how to do, like communicate with him. I re- you, if you ever remember like dating when you were younger, um, you, if, when you get a boyfriend, you talk to that boy all day long, especially in the summertime, you talk to that boy all day long. You just want to see what he's doing. Even, even, even at nighttime, you might fall asleep on the phone, just wanting to just be close to him. And I feel like that's what the Lord wants us to do. Like all day long, he wants us to talk to him. Even he wants us to fall asleep thinking about him because I feel like that's how he does us. I, 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 I truly believe like whenever the Lord does send my next, it will be a reflection of his heart for me. And I feel like we're going to we're going to worship God together. We're going to pray together. We're going to do some things together, but we also going to like make God like the center of everything. And that's one thing I, I recognize because of the person I used to be, I wasn't as strong enough in that area. Um, as far as my, I was looking with these eyes and not my spiritual eyes. And, and, and that's not what the Lord will have. But anyway, That was all I had. As time goes on and on, we'll do more of these Bible studies. But it's so cool just to just to get up and read and just just worship God and and understand his word. And hopefully over the next couple of Bible studies that we have, we get deeper and deeper and not so surface. Um, But I just wanted to be a, a smooth, quick introduction. I'm so excited about what the Lord is getting ready to do in these Bible studies. I thank him for his presence. Thank you for your time. And um, I look forward to you meeting me here in the mornings in the recovery room. Have a blessed day, y'all.